What is up, everybody? My name is Gummy Worm Jim. Welcome to Minecraft. This is specifically the Neolithic Revolution uh, module. Oh, hello. How's it going, dude? What up, yo? Can I do I talk to you? What do you do? Do you do anything? Hey, what up? Okay, nothing, nothing. Inventory, anything? Nope. Uh, okay. Well, all right then. Uh, nice meeting you. <clears throat> we got, um, it looks like a village to explore. I don't know uh, what to expect here with this Neolithic Revolution pack. I don't know if I can even mine and or craft at this point. Can I mine and or craft? Mine and or crafting. Is it a thing that I can do here? Hello. Ooh, this tree is not a tree. Is all of this for me okay weird I've, I've never played a module of minecraft before so i don't know what what to expect from you know like a little i mean that's not really true <laughs> china lee and i started a module of minecraft just yesterday um which will probably be up on the channel in chunks and music sections these kind of uh module systems that they have here i don't i don't know what to expect what do i with nothing nothing there's nothing uh, this is lovely. Hay, hay roofs, which is actually pretty accurate. It wouldn't be uh, sidelong like that. Normally what we, what people would do is there's walls are very easy to start construct uh, walls like that. And then they would thatch it, which is just making a kind of uh, lattice of, of straw like that. And it doesn't necessarily, um, it's not entirely 100% waterproof waterproof. Uh, but what it is is that if the water will hit the straw and as it you know runs down the strands and drips it hits other strands so that so by the time it does drip inside let's can we get inside what is okay what's going on man I don't know about you guys it feels like the uh, police are trying to make themselves extra necessary in my neck of the woods these days I'm like they're real scared that we're all gonna Decide that they're not necessary and defund them or something. Um, what, what, use? What do you mean use? What do I, oh, oh. Cool, okay, but, but, but why? I mean, yes. Having fire inside is a big thing. Oh, nice. They, uh, they just have a floating chimney. Ended up being just considered a bad idea all around because, for one, it lets way too much air in and out. Um, stuff just basically can just bloop. Uh, so open air chimney them and live with them for your entire life if you want to. I'm sure many people have lived in houses with open air chimneys, but they are considered kind of kind of risky, kind of dangerous, and gin up your house in a way that's not really super fun. Is there anything that you do? Do you do anything, or do we just? Or am I just? Oh, hello. The Neolithic Revolution is all about village life. In history, humans started living in villages. Before this. They were always traveling to follow. <coughs> wait, where am I? To follow animals and pick fruits and vegetables. This all changed when humans started taming animals. This meant that they didn't have to travel far and could live lives. Some of the first animals that humans tamed were pigs, sheep. Okay, wait. Let's go back and see what the teacher had to say about the thing in the back. I didn't realize that that's what this is. This is all just a, a lesson. I appreciate this, actually. It's really neat. So, we got to see, um, like I said, that's that's a, uh, a thatch, like kind of a, uh, almost like a for uh, housing animals. What about all this stuff? Stonehenge, basically, except just monoliths. Okay, so if I smack you, hey there. Welcome to the Neolithic Age. Twelve thousand years ago was a super exciting time for humans. You want to find out why? Take the path to the left to discover what everyday life was like in the Neolithic village. Once you're done, take the path to the right uh, to learn more about the culture, life, and beliefs of the Neolithic people. I'll talk to you there. Okay, cool. So that's the path to go learn about the people. Let's go look at the village again, because we've only so far learned about the uh, the roofs and the fact that they started taming animals. <clears throat> now, speaking from my own culture as a Native American, um, what we did a lot of, at least my tribes, um, because I'm, I'm both of them, the tribes from on my mom's side and my dad's side are California tribes. 
So we spent a lot of time fishing uh, and digging for clams on the Yurok and Wiat side. Uh, Yurok, Karuk, Wiat, and Hoopa tribes over here, which is my mom's side. That's like the Humboldt County area. And then uh, on my dad's side, Snow Hunter Deer. They were a tribe of, of snowy mountains. And so they uh, for furs and stuff um, to stay warm. And yeah, let's learn about the Neolithic village, though, because this is before that. This is like... <clears throat> I'm only going back like a few hundred years, uh, whereas this is levels. It looks like we're gaining, this is cool, so this is the first, and you start building upward. <clears throat> and they didn't really have a, 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 a really good way to make a roof that was going to stay stable, so they just thatched, which is what that is. And thatching is still a valid option. I think, um, I think a lot about thatched roofs and how I would love to keep a thatched roof for um, outdoor things like chicken coops, um, any kind of cook shack or anything if you wanted to to just do a quick temporary setup while you're building a, a better roof, a thatched roof is a great option. What are we doing here? Hello. So this is this is obviously you want a, a pin for the animals. This is a pig pin. Hello. Um I don't know why I even came in here. I was just gonna see if there was any other lessons over here, but it looks like no. The next iteration of Mr. Teacher. There you This is lovely. We got sheep. As you can see, we're moving into some more stone building and with better roofs. So they have wooden roofs instead of thatched roofs. Hello. Because humans could stay in, they started planting seeds and growing them. Need more people. More food meant that more kids, which meant the villages grew quickly. Animals like land. And then barley opened up a lot of different seeds. It's really amazing the way that we, um, as a species, if you look at other animals, a lot of them will look for um, more pungent food. They'll look for fruits or even carnivorous, you know, creatures that will just eat other creatures. They look for things that are like a big meal in one, whereas humans did this interesting thing that a lot of um, smaller, more uh, symbiotic species do, which is really rad. We learned how to, like, chaff like this. Um and pull the heads off of grain, how to grind grain. We learned how to turn all this stuff into usable uh, food by first creating a powder. Pretty brilliant. Um, and not like, n not the most revolutionary thing that, that our, our species has done, but <clears throat> just an interesting decision. Once you start introducing flour and stuff, but all of this is all just like, you know, looking back, we didn't have record of what we've gathered looking back at our species. This is great, though. I love this. One of the side effects of the Neolithic Revolution is that humans had more need for good land. This land was taken by forests. So humans started cutting down some of the forests to turn them into farmland, and they used the wood to build their homes with. That's true. <clears throat> and you can see how all of this was... Um, by Nisette, if you look at where we're going as a species now, uh, we have not ignore exponential increases continue this process that we've learned here. The Neolithic Revolution this is a great place to start because it's where we started doing this kind of stuff, which is we took dominion, is, is the word that a lot of um, like religious people really like to use. We took dominion over the planet. We started doing this kind of stuff where we were harvesting <coughs> wheat which was great. Started harvesting trees, which was a, a good idea. We need to do that for farm out here, where we just stop thinking about um, about whether or not this forest was necessary. So that's really unfortunate, and maybe that'll get better. We'll see. Adam seems kind of bummed out about that. He's like got to look off in the distance, like, oh man. Yeah, this is interesting, and this is you know what? This actually, it's cool that this is so like wooden and a lot some of the like Native American longhouses that you see, which is what a lot of these uh, square houses are. Yurox built big rectangular uh, longhouses out of um, planks of redwood and other trees that were dried and then just split. They didn't, they didn't cut them with saws or anything. They would just let them dry out and drive wedges through them. So they were just these weird kind of curvy, neat planks of Although Yurok houses would then have plank roofs, so they would just make the entire thing out of planks. Probably not the warmest folks did for warmth, other than furs and um, 
foliage and whatnot, but I had to do two. We had to figure it out. So, okay. I think all of the village teacher has to say about the people. Oh. The people. The people. The people. Um, what a beautiful little map, though. I like that they actually use different... different it seems like they, they really went all out trying to make this more of an educational setup. <clears throat> the reason I'm running through this is that it actually kind of just went amorphous, which I love. They went fully cross-platform. It's all just Minecraft. I still have access to the Xbox One and Xbox 360 edition, but they're not really being updated or anything. And if you just play this, you know, Minecraft version, um, there's a lot more content now available, including all of this free educational content. Yeah. Free content! <clears throat> so, we're starting here at the Neolithic. A minhir is a large man-made rock that is stones. A minhir can vary a lot in size, but they're generally uneven and squared off. They can appear in a stone circle in rows. They can be also placed randomly throughout the landscape. Nobody knows why people put all the effort into placing these large stones. I can almost tell you right now, I bet you I know why. I bet you I know why people started doing this. Are you ready? <clears throat> it's it's really, really simple. It's so that they didn't get lost. That's basically it. Like it's landscape, and you're like, oh, I have no idea where I am. What am I sp Oh, wait. It's the weird one that I put up right there. That means I go this way. Pretty sure that's what... I don't know. That's almost assuredly... Light. Um, ceremonial sites are... Ev the fact that people gathered there and held ceremonies there, that alone should make those places kind of like sacred and worth protecting and stuff. Whoa. Textures. <clears throat> What's up, Mr. Teacher? Or often called a stone table for loved ones. People did this. <clears throat> I bet you it is to keep predators from eating the bodies at first. See, my uh, initial thought on most of it is, if you've ever gone camping, if you've ever been out in the woods, like actually trying to survive and stuff, uh, your first your first need is food, and then you need rest and shelter, right? The thing that that causes a problem between those two things is that after you've eaten, there's food waste, and if you don't deal with the food waste, you're you can barely breathe. Freaking quarantining. <laughs> um, really know for sure we've fucking picked up shit in the house anyway <laughs> um what was i saying right the food waste it, it makes it to where your rest and shelter situation can be less safe so i would imagine that's the same reason we started burying the dead is because you you can't have anything that would attract predators near your uh same with these these are just for probably not getting lost what up mr teacher for the richer people, or leaders, there were burial mounds. This is basically a large... In the center of the hill would be the place where they would bury the person. Often these burial mounds... <clears throat> so how we ended up having graveyards, although graveyards were originally the same thing I was talking about before, where it was just to make sure that we weren't attacked by predators. I like the redstone torches in here. It's very nice. Very pretty. Oh, I see. So this is... This is basically as though they had made a tomb for a family, um, and you can have multiple wings where you uh, seal people off in there once they've once they've passed. You can have uh, to their uh, just family to come and gather, or you could even put uh, a patriarch or a matriarch in there. That was probably a big thing back in families uh, back then, back in the Neolithic era. Ooh, speaking of Stonehenge, this looks very much like a Stonehenge. Although, now that I look at it, I wonder if it was if it was always kind of meant to be like an arena thing. Like, you think people made these kind of things so that they could get to can fight? And I guess technically that would be the same as a ceremony, would it not? That's what, like, native ceremonies are, is just playing music, praying, sweating, doing, you know. Stonehenge is most likely the most famous monument from the Neolithic Age. It was built in three phases, spread out over 1,000 years. The first version was made out of wood. The builders later switched over to stone. Some of the stones at Stonehenge came from 160 miles or 260 kilometers away. Nobody knows how they were built, uh, how they built such an impressive structure without any machines. Even the lightest stones weigh over 3,600 kilograms or sounds. The biggest stones weigh up to is four elephants. In the 12th century, people thought that giants made it. 
<clears throat> now I wonder how to scale this is because I've never been to Stonehenge. I've never actually seen Stonehenge, but I do. I have heard that it's very, very large. Um, people talk about how the scale of it is work at it, and I mean, <laughs> I grew up with Spinal Tap with the joke about the little tiny Stonehenge. So scale and Stonehenge are two things that are like <laughs> not super congruent in my mind, but how cool. Thanks, Mr. Teacher. Is this all of it? Is this the whole? Quite a bit. We learned about the village. We learned about the henge. <clears throat> I made a bunch of... Uh, these stones might not be about being lost. It might just be for some other reason. Maybe they actually did originally have writing on them. Um... Like you see with the Rosetta Stone, where we had, we believed, kind of cracked open. I mean, well, I don't think we believed. Uh, linguists, maybe they have more to do with that. Maybe they're like, I don't know. Maybe all of the above. If there's anything out here, because there's... Nope. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for our um, tour of the Neolithic uh, era. Thanks for coming with me. You think about how we play Minecraft today. It does do a very good job of kind of plopping you right into the plight of the Neolithic person, which is, what are you supposed to do? And as you know, in Minecraft, it's the same thing. You, you go and you gather dirt and wood, and you start building a shelter, and you try to... So, Thank you, Mr. Teacher. It was a lovely, uh, lovely, lovely lesson. We appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Bye!